Church Urban House, we recognise how difficult it is for parents um, juggling both work and online learning. And Rosie and I have been sent a number of questions from parents in the wider community, and we hope that our tips are useful for you all. With teachers now relying on parents to deliver lessons to their children, what are schools doing to support pa the parents, especially those who are struggling? Ultimately, parents are not responsible for their child's learning. We are in school as teachers. We know how challenging these times are for families, particularly for parents who are working from home, as well as supporting their child's learning. And that's why it's really important for parents to ensure that they reach out to schools. Absolutely, the, the homeschool partnership is absolutely cru crucial. And really we want collaboration between school and, and home. And parents shouldn't feel worried or guilty about contacting the school and asking for help. That's what we're here for. Absolutely, and through these times, we're not only here for the children, but to support families as well. Um, but some helping points for you as parents at home. Ensure that you establish a clear routine for your children. Uh, think about getting up at the same time every morning, having the same break times and meal times, going to bed at the same time and also to establish a dedicated learning space. Absolutely. So that your child knows, when I sit here, I am ready for learning. Um, but then start to think about how you can support your children who are of different ages. So for children who are younger than seven, perhaps think about more practical activities and break down the learning into smaller chunks. Don't feel so pressured to do everything that the school is offering. If they are offering lessons throughout the entire day, don't feel that your child has to do all of the work that has been set. For older children above the age of seven, as a parent, your role then might shift towards giving your child a little bit of direction and a little bit of guidance, but really we want the children to be as independent as possible. Absolutely. But throughout all of this, you know, parents really praising their children and encouraging them because it, it is difficult for the children as well. They would much prefer to be in school and we need to recognise that both as teachers and as parents. So plenty of praise all the way through. And also when enough is enough and when things do get too challenging, take that time as a family, come away from the screens, come away from all of the work and just try and do something that will reset and get your children ready for the next day. Perfect. Hello, I was wondering if you had any advice for getting children outside during the school day while they're online learning. Um, because we don't have a garden, um, we have to go to the local park, which is quite close, but um, often we can't seem to find time during the school timetable to do that. Thank you. I think really you have to think creatively about this. Absolutely. And I think this is an opportunity for you as a family to think carefully about how to bring some fun challenges into your day. Consider setting up daily challenges or an active calendar filled with activities that you can use day to day, perhaps to compete with each other um, or just individually. So you could walk down the street for 11 minutes and see if you can return in 10 do 25 star jumps and time yourself and see if you can beat your time the next day. Set up challenges, competitions amongst the family. Um, but we recognise that, that not every family set up is the same and there will be families who don't have gardens, who have restricted space. And it really is thinking outside of the box and coming up with, with exciting challenges that everybody can be involved with. Absolutely, and I mean, we as a school have built into our timetable time for games and physical activity. And we know that other schools out there are doing the same. So use that time to get outside, do something active. If not, try and use other areas of the curriculum to go outside and use outdoor spaces to further... For example, maths. They yeah. could be going out, measuring, um, if it was um, science an investigation about rocks go out and look for some rocks there are there, there are things that that everybody can be involved with 
um, you just have to think slightly differently. Hello, I would like to know how teachers are ensuring that um, children are remaining fully engaged during remote learning lessons and what mechanisms are in place for providing extra help for those that are struggling. Yeah, so we will use a number of ways. Um, attendance is obviously crucial, uh, but we measure and monitor pastoral engagement and also our children are submitting work regularly so that is another way to, to ensure that they're being engaged. Absolutely and within our school community with regard to attendance we deliver a full-time online timetable and the children are expected to attend live lessons so we will monitor the engagement in terms of how many children are engaging with every lesson of the day. Um, we will then start to think from a more pastoral perspective so we'll look at how the children are interacting with lessons due to the fact that cameras are expected to stay on we can see how the children appear on the screen. Um, we can tell how often they are interacting with discussions and offering their own ideas. Um, and then we also start to think about time outside of learning when we can do the daily check-in. So registration points in the morning, uh, story time in the afternoon. Um, and we'll see how many children are interacting with that as well. Um, and then with regard to submitting work, we monitor engagement with regard to the children's independence. So are they submitting the work that they are expected to do every day? Um, are they in fact going above and beyond? So are they offering tasks that haven't been set by us, but they've gone out of their way to do something that they want to do that they then wish to show with their peers and with their teachers? If children are not are beginning to not submit the work that's expected, then our first port of call would be to speak with the children. Specifically if the children are a little bit older, we know that the children take responsibility for their learning and can certainly then act on any advice that we give and they can then offer the work that is missing. But our next port of call would be to speak with parents. Absolutely. And again, it's that homeschool partnership working together. But just coming back to submitting work, children that go above and beyond, we're following our normal reward system here. We send home head teacher awards for, for those children who, who, who do go above and beyond. So they, they are feeling that life for them is as normal as we can possibly get it to be. Absolutely, so we replicate all of the awards that we use in school, house points, and as you said, head teacher awards, the children still take pride in the learning that they produce. Hello, I was wondering what kind of pastoral support you offer your students during this homeschooling period. We recognise that pastoral support is absolutely crucial and therefore we offer a number of ways to ensure that our children, um, their well-being is protected and preserved and actually strengthened. Definitely, and as a form tutor, um, I will be the first to call for the children every morning. So during the registration meet, we give the children an opportunity to discuss um, anything that had happened in the previous day or any questions that they might have in advance of the new learning day. And then I'm the last point of contact for the children at the end of the day too. So we have an opportunity to share a story um, and just to catch up on the day really. And this can be um, the children's chance to show any work that they are proud of, um, to chat with their peers, um, and just to raise anything that they want to just have a chat about and to clarify really. Um, we also offer wellbeing time in our timetable so the children have the chance to do activities that perhaps we don't offer in the curriculum so things such as knitting or colouring or just practical things that perhaps they would like to spend some time doing to make themselves feel better. We also offer mini meets um, where the children are offered the chance to chat in small groups but still supervised by an adult. So one of us in school will oversee the children just spending some time having a social conversation. 
Um, and that's really important because we recognise that the children are very detached from their peers at the moment. So we in school are facilitating opportunities for the children to still have a chat with their friends and to ensure that those friendship groups still remain firmly in place for their return to school. Absolutely. Everything that we do is to try as far as possible to um, give them as normal an experience as they possibly could have in, in these very strange times. And we also recognise that, you know, that parents may also have worries and we, would, we, we offer meets for the parents so that if they have concerns they can share them readily with the, with the form tutor or with the subject teacher. And that, that's just as important as um, the pastoral care for the children. Of course, and I think if we in lessons notice that the children aren't quite themselves, then we will also make, take that step to reach out to parents too.